Where do we see this in chemistry? Well, we might see a situation where we're doing an experiment where we have in the middle of this YouTube, yeah, YouTube, <laughs> meant something different when I was your age. You would have this semi-permeable membrane down here at the bottom that would allow the flow of water, but not any of the dissolved uh, materials. On one side here, we have an example where there's seawater and what is called normal saline, the type that would be the same level as what is in your body as far as saltiness. But the ocean is saltier. More salt, less salt, less water, more water. So at that point, since there's more water here and less over here, the water will move this way. Well, if the water keeps moving this way, this side is going to have to go up as far as how, what the level is. At the same time that's happening, this side is going to have to also go down because if the water's leaving this side, the level is going to go down. So you end up, eventually it will stop moving and you'd be able to measure the difference in height here. When you have that, that amount of liquid has a mass and it's pressing down because of gravity. And you can sit there and say, oh, I can change this then into an amount of pressure. And we use the Greek capital letter pi to indicate that pressure. So osmotic pressure, we use capital pi to uh, describe it. And we say that it would be the pressure across that membrane that would stop the flow of water from the compartment that contains pure solvent or a less concentrated solution to the compartment containing the more concentrated solution. And we have a formula for it. So this formula, it says pi equals MRT. Well, what are these? We already said what pi was, it was a pressure. M is molar concentration. So this capital M is molarity like we've learned about before. It says that R is the gas law constant and T is the absolute temperature. Because you will see this in a slightly different format if you end up taking the ACS exam. You will see it as pi equals I MRT. We'll talk about I a little bit more soon. Um, but I, for right now, we will simply say that this is based on the identity of the solute. Now, it does not have any units associated with it. Molarity, we know the units for molarity. That's moles per liter. R, the gas constant. Well, we usually say that's liter atmospheres over moles and Kelvin. And T, temperature, temperatures in Kelvin. So whenever we work one of these problems, we are going to want to make sure that we change our temperature into Kelvin first thing we do, okay? Now, if you look at this, you will see the liters will cancel, the moles will cancel, Kelvin will cancel, and you'll be left with atmospheres, which is good because this is supposed to be an osmotic pressure. So atmospheres is a good unit for pressure. And this is another one of the colligative properties. What are, what's a colligative property? a characteristic that depends upon the concentration, not the identity of the particles. When I say molarity, I'm just talking about the molarity of the solute. I don't care what the solute was. Okay, so the molarity, and it says, depends on the concentration and not the identity of the particles dissolved in the solvent. I is going to be telling us about the number of particles. Because when some things dissolve, they come apart. Some things don't come apart. Oh, what was I talking about? Well, think about the ethanol, first of all. If we have ethanol, it does not fall apart. It creates just one particle and I will be one for ethanol. If on the other hand, I was dissolving sodium chloride, 
I think of sodium chloride as falling apart into ions. Now I have two different particles. I might have put a mole of sodium chloride in, but I end up with two moles of particles. So I would be equal to two. And if I went on to something a little more strange, like say sodium sulfate, then I would say, oh, I expect this to fall apart into two sodium ions and a sulfate ion. And I would say that I equals three for this. These are first order approximations to the truth. That one is the only one that's going to be completely accurate. We'll go over that more, but this I has a name. I is the Van't Hoff factor.